I would like to welcome you to my uh, three-month progress report presentation. My name is Diana Yov, and my thesis focuses on investigating the different uh, diagnostic and therapeutic approaches for gastroesophageal reflux disease. I am currently a first-year student here in the CDM, and I'm also a PhD student in the Grigore Tepopa University of Medicine and Pharmacy from Iași, Romania. Uh, here, my supervisor is Valint Eros, and back home, uh, Vasile Drug. And my SMS is the SMS of the month, uh, Mahmoud Obeidat. <laughs> Uh, my vision would be to improve the clinical management of patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease and the, the mission through which I plan to carry that out is to aid a, a better understanding of various diagnostic and therapeutic approaches for this disease. Uh, my specific goals are two projects that are uh, involved in this uh, thesis. The first one is investigating therapeutic effects of acid suppressive medications in patients with non-specific chronic cough, which is a systematic review and meta-analysis. And the second uh, project is, a, uh, is also a systematic review and meta-analysis focused on the image-enhanced endoscopy features in patients with non-erosive GERD. Uh, a bit of uh, information about my, second pro my first project. As we all know, chronic cough is recognized by the Montreal Consensus as a possible form of extraesophageal GERD. Uh, we care about this because it has quite a significant global prevalence of uh, up to 10% and because it is a significant cause for uh, quality of life impairment. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in terms of treatment, we are not quite sure how to uh, manage this disease. Even current guidelines recognize a paucity of evidence in this area as current studies yield inconsistent results. Therefore, our aim would be to assess the therapeutic effects of acid suppressive medications in patients, in adult patients, with nonspecific chronic cough. For this um, target, we employed the PICO framework. We chose adult patients with chronic cough as the population. The intervention would be acid suppressors. The comparator is placebo, and the outcomes would be the uh, cough severity and quality of life of these patients. And our hypothesis is that, indeed, treatment with acid suppressive medication is beneficial in these patients. This way, we could improve the treatment of patients with chronic cough. We did our systematic search on the 1st of November 2022. Our search key looked something like this. It had three domains. The first one was related to the concept of, uh, the concept of chronic cough, the second one to the concept of acid suppressive medications, and the third one to the concept of randomization as we only plan to include randomized controlled trials. This is the flowchart of selection. At first, we ended up with 1,804 8, 1, articles. And after uh, all the steps, we ended up with 11 articles eligible uh, full texts. Um, just a quick mention for my first project, we also finished the data extraction for the primary outcome, and we are coming close to finishing the uh, data extraction for the second outcome as well. In terms of my second project, the image enhanced endoscopy features in patients with non-erosive GERD, a bit of background. Non-erosive gastroesophageal reflux disease is typically defined as the presence of typical uh, symptoms of GERD, such as heartburn and regurgitation, in the absence of uh, white lesion of uh, lesions visible on white light endoscopy. Um, recent studies have proposed certain morphological characteristics to be potential markers for non-erosive GERD on image-enhanced endoscopy. Image-enhanced image endoscopy, such as, for example, narrow band imaging, or NBI, uh, eye scan, uh, FICE, or blue laser imaging. Uh, our aim would be to decrease the need for further testing if indeed we find uh, certain morphological characteristics that are associated with non-erosive GERD. For this, we, uh, we use the PECO framework. The population would be patients undergoing image-enhanced endoscopy. The exposure would be uh, non-erosive um, GERD. The comparator would be the absence of GERD, and the outcome would be the various morphological features that have been proposed as potential uh, mucosal markers for this disease. And our hypothesis is that, indeed, certain image-enhanced endoscopy features are associated with non-erosive GERD. 
This way, as I mentioned, the clinical implication would be that we could decrease the need for further diagnostic testing um, in patients with non-erosive GERD. We have the preliminary search key. For now, it has two domains, the domain related to the image-enhanced endoscopy, the second one related to the concept of non-erosive GERD. Um, we got around 600 hits in three databases, and these are the three, some of the three uh, key articles that we found. The good news is there is no previous systematic review or meta-analysis on this topic and no prospero registration uh, at this moment. In, this, uh, uh, in summary, uh, I plan to finish my first uh, project somewhere around March 2023 and my second project somewhere around April 2023. And I would like to end my presentation with a quote from uh, Franklin Roosevelt, uh, which says, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. It was a really beautiful presentation. I have a question regarding your first uh, topic. Uh, my topic also has quality of life. Uh, so I know how hard it is to pull this data. Um, I'm guessing that you have different uh, questionnaires. So how do you, how do you, uh, how will you pull them? Or is there any methodological way to, to pull these data? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Yes, indeed, um, most of the studies use different scales to measure quality of life in these patients. Uh, but there is a way to actually pull this data. If we do the standardized mean difference, we have talked with the statisticians and they suggested that it is possible with uh, this uh, methodology and um, the data is usable. Thank you for your great presentation. I like to ask you that you mentioned non-specific cough, but how do you mean that? Is there a definition for that? Or? Thank you for your question, yes. Um, so non-specific chronic cough, first of all, we could define the concept of chronic, which is a prolonged cough, uh, usually defined by current guidelines as more than eight weeks. Uh, some of the studies that we found define it as more than four weeks, so it's so a prolonged cough, usually more than four, eight weeks. And the non-specific part refers to the the, the concept that the patient has no respiratory disease, so they have um, a normal chest x-ray, they don't have asthma, they don't have uh, bronchitis and uh, no allergies. There's also no uh, concurrent use of medications that may have cough as a side effect, for example, ACE inhibitors. So uh, most of the studies that we found have like clear exclusion criteria that involves most of these uh, concepts. Nice presentation, thank you. Is there any data in the literature regarding or comparing these newer uh, imaging techniques with the so-called gold standard of GERD diagnostics, which is the manometry? Yes, thank you for your question. Very good question. We also had this discussion uh, in our team. Uh, sadly, no, there is no... Uh, at one point, I found one very recent uh, randomized uh, trial that in the first part actually compared these uh, findings to the uh, multi-channel impedance monitoring. But there's just one, it's very, uh, very recent, and um, we don't have more so that we could actually do a diagnostic uh, test uh, evaluation for this method, this endoscopic method that we are looking at. So um, just one study looking at what you asked, and we, we cannot do that as of now. <laughs> yeah, th th there is quite a long... Um I'm running this question between chronic cough and uh, GERDs. Um, actually, we still don't know how to, how to define the LPR, the laryngeal pharyngeal reflux. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you have uh, maybe any subgroups that you will define between the well-defined GERD patient or the extraesophageal GERD patient and like the another GERD patient and the effect of acid suppressive therapy in this patient because as we know that the, the, the pH metry performed uh, for the lower uh, is is acid exposure time does not really co um, coincide with uh, the LPR symptoms and the um, efficacy of, for the PPIs let's say so 
this might be a little bit tricky to perform the meta-analysis. So can, can you maybe comment it a little bit? Yes, uh, thank you for your comment and your question. That's actually a very, very good comment. Um, even in the previous meta-analysis that was done in 2011 on this topic, they uh, divided the patients and patients from internal medicine wards, which are, let's say, the chronic cough patients, as you said, more well-defined patients, and the patients that come from the otorhinolaryngology clinics, which are the LPR patients, and they did the, the separation and they looked at that data differently. Uh, we plan to do different uh, subgroup analysis also on our patients, and we were also thinking about dividing them into these two categories as well. So we were kind of thinking of addressing that issue also. And uh, also we were thinking to, uh, about doing a subgroup analysis only on the patients who have um, impedance proven reflux because we have studies that report that and only, for example, include patients with um, uh, multi-channel um, impedance monitoring proven reflux. So we could do subgroup analysis only on those to see if what is the response of those who know for sure that have GERD associated with the chronic cough.